have mentioned before previous storytelling events, uh, I had little means growing up. So when I was able to work, I jumped at the opportunity. So when I was 14, um, I got a what's called a worker's permit through school where the principal had to sign it, my parents and the employer saying, yes, we know that we're committing child labor, but everyone's cool with it for just this occurrence. Um, so we signed all the paperwork and I started working at a uh, restaurant, local and restaurant down the street from my house. Um, and I will, I will change the names of the restaurants to protect the not so innocent corporate monsters who have stole my soul, my young soul at a very early age. Um, this first place I started working at, it was a you know locally owned restaurant, and I started as a dishwasher. So they 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 showed me how to use this giant you know fire breathing dishwasher that has the you know the lid on it, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, my first day on the job. You know, I'm doing my thing, washing my dishes, and the manager comes up and says, another dickhead kid didn't show up tonight. I need you to cook. And I said, I, I don't know how to cook. He said, grab a spatula. It's not rocket science. Like, you little jerk, get up there and cook. So I started cooking my first day as a dishwasher. Didn't even know how to cook. I was guessing as I went along, sort of throwing the wolf, so to speak. And I, they ended up working me to like midnight, one in the morning on weeknights, on school nights. So, I mean, I was in eighth grade at the time. So it was, you know, and, and I was kind of a meek kid and, and didn't really stick up for myself. And I was afraid to say anything. So I kept working that ridiculous shift. And late at night, it would end up being me and this older kid who terrified me. I mean, you know, I kind of bought into the whole occult Satanist thing when I was in the 80s, and I thought this kid was going to, like, skin me and hang me to a tree and commit a ritual around me, because he was very terrifying, you know? And he would always, you know, try to get me to, like, hang out with him afterward. Hey, come on back and hang out with me. He's probably trying to get me to, like, smoke pot with him or something. I didn't know at the time. And what one of the, the red flags to this guy was one night uh, early on, I was mopping the floor, and he got my mop water ready and mixed ammonia and bleach together in the bucket. And I, I, even I knew that was something was up there. Yeah, he was kind of sketchy. So um, I, I probably worked there maybe a couple months and I just, I hated it, you know. As much as it was nice to be able to buy clothes that weren't from Kmart, you know, and get some, you know, take care of myself as a youngster. Um, I, I just, and I didn't know, I, I, what, 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 uh, how can I get out of this, you know? I couldn't quit, and, and I, I thought my parents would be disappointed in me. So, um, I did what every kid would normally do and fantasize about the place burning down or blowing up or something catastrophic happening. Wouldn't you know it, it burnt down. I didn't do it, but I was, I was going to school one morning and I heard that this restaurant burnt down. I was like, yes. No one's hurt? Okay, yes. Um, so restaurants became a very prevalent part of, uh, you know, from probably the time I was a teenager up until my, uh, my uh, mid-twenties. And on and off, I worked at so many different restaurants. I, I worked at a breakfast place uh, for quite a while. And if anyone's ever worked at a restaurant, you leave actually smelling like the, rest, the, like the food you make. Like you literally become, like I smelled like a sausage link and a piece of bacon and uh, a freshly cooked waffle, which was, uh, that was kind of nice. Um, so I, uh, I learned how to make an egg like 12 different ways. I still can, you know, I still can make eggs a uh, number of different ways. Breakfast is kind of my specialty and when I cook at home. Um, so a little later, uh, I got my first job as a waiter and uh, it was a, a rustic, folksy uh, restaurant. I'll call it uh, Rustic Bucket. Um, uh, and, you know, and they were known for being bigots, still are, I think, and discriminatory <laughs> hiring policies, and it also was a very sketchy place where corporate, corporate owned, um, and I've always been kind of a clumsy person, and when, when they were training us, and when they, when they told us we had to carry pitchers of drinks on a tray, I was like, oh, this is gonna, not going to go well. I almost willed this to happen, but my very first table, these two sweet old ladies, I dripped... I dropped a pitcher of ice cold water in one of their laps. Like very first table, very first day on the job, and uh, that that would not be the last time I spilled things on people throughout my my waiter career. 
Um, and so that, re that job uh, did not end well. Um, you know, one night, uh, a, group, a couple came in about five minutes before we closed, and they stayed probably an hour after we closed. And I, for those of you who worked in a restaurant, that was like, uh, it was the, you know, you count down the minutes before they actually closed, and people would come in right before you close and just, you know, take their time and, and m multiple courses. And they had to sit in the very far, furthest reaches of the restaurant, and all night they were running me around, and I was so discouraged, and they were very rude. Um, and so, you know, this rustic bucket also has a lovely gift shop with all these, you know, quaint <laughs> country type of gifts. And, and so they leave literally two pennies as a tip, and they're out in the gift shop, and I thought, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I've got to say something. I picked up the pennies, and I walked out, and the husband was, was up there, and I don't know where the wife was, and I, I said, you know, was something wrong with the meal? No, everything was fine. I said, well, you, you left something on the table, these two pennies. I, I'm assuming they're not for me because this isn't really a tip and I'm, I'm you know, you obviously need it more than me. And, and then the guy just looked at me and stammered. He's like, I, I didn't do that. My wife did it. Like, totally throwing her under the bus. <laughs> I, I didn't do it. So I said, okay, have a good night. Walked away. You know, the next day I go in to get my check. They fire me. Without even asking anything, you know, without even asking for my side of it, they told the, the, the manager that I swore at them and was yelling at them, and then I wished I would have sworn at them, you know, considering I lost my job. So, you know, I go across the street to a seafood chain, um, national seafood chain, and I walk in and I, you know, told them that I just finished working at this place across the street. Um, and, and they laughed, and they're like, oh, that place. Yeah, and, she, and the, the, the manager there talk, told me about how the manager who fired me was actually fired from this place for sleeping with a <laughs> server. And I thought, okay. <laughs> so I was kind of glad to be out of that place. So then, in this other place, which I will call the Blue Crustacean, I was, I was waiting tables in the middle of a busy afternoon, and the, the cook, who was a very angry man, he just stormed out one day in the middle of a lunch rush, and the manager's frantic, and he's like, I need someone who can cook, who can cook? It's kind of like one of those scenes where someone's having a heart attack and looking for a doctor, and I said, I can cook. Raised my hand like an idiot. So then, and then I made a list of demands. He's like, okay, what will it take to get you back here? And I calculated how much I made in tips, because usually the waiters made more than the cooks. I'm like, okay, give me... 15 bucks an hour, and I'll cook. And they did, and I started cooking there. And I realized how shitty of a job that was and why this guy walked out. So probably about, I don't know, let's say about four months later, five months later, you know, after some just really unfair management tactics, I was forced to fire people as a cook. Even though I wasn't a manager, they were making me fire other cooks. I had to come in on holidays and work late and didn't get many days off. So... I, I grew so resentful of the management there, I walked out on a very, very busy Saturday night when the entire restaurant was full of people. I orchestrated this thing, you know, very well. I coordinated it. We had keys to unlock the back door, and I waited till it was super busy, and I, I walked out. So, um, you know, throughout, throughout all these restaurant jobs I had, I, like Blue said earlier, I learned humility. I learned... Uh, that it's okay to be judged by people who had no idea that I was getting a college degree, that I was not just a servant, um, and you know, people really treat you badly, and, and you get used to that, you know. I learned how to, I guess, adapt socially to people. I was a very socially awkward uh, person when I was younger, still am, but uh, I, I cope a little better with it. And so I learned humility, I learned how to, you know, how to be a nice person even in the face of someone being mean to me. Um, and then I, I also have, you know, grown to really love cooking ever since I, since I don't do it as a job anymore. I do like cooking at home. In fact, um, my, my marriage, before it ended in, you know, uh, horribly, I would cook every day. Even when things were terrible there, I cooked for everybody in that household every single day. Breakfast and dinner. I would work 12-hour days, go home and still cook dinner because I... I almost use cooking as a way to try to save my family, as a way to try to, you know, make a last-ditch effort, you know, to bring us all together. 
So, you know, food has been very prominent throughout my life through, through some of these weird restaurant jobs. Um, and I'm not ashamed to admit, if I lost my job today, I could easily go back into a restaurant and probably get a job with the many years experience I had. So I don't look at myself as not working in restaurants anymore, just kind of taking a break from it um, for know, 20 years. <laughs> Going on 20 years. So, um, so yeah, that's, you know, I know this food was the topic, but I thought, I worked at so many restaurants that I would tie that together a little bit. I probably missed some things, but um, as much as I, as I spent years trying to get out of that life to have a normal career, I, I do miss some elements of it. You know, there's a lot of camaraderie with restaurant people. They are serious partiers. <laughs> I, would, I would often, when I waited tables, I would we'd go to the bar afterward and I, I had to be careful I didn't spend my cash chips drinking that same night, which did happen before. Um, sometimes I ended up negative when I made uh, that day. So, anyways, thanks everybody.